Um, we're gonna, I'm going to do three poems at this time. Yes. We're going to start off in the doll office. We're going to end up dancing. So that would be oh, better. Oh. Um, interview at the DWP. Please have more manners than these women who with their thin lips and delicate lockets are guardians of the nation's purse. They are strangers to pity, manglers of language, spit dry words in a parody of trial. After fussing with a double tape recorder, which is alleged to make everything fair, they trick with their trip up questions, probe the perfect recall of dates and actions, an interrogation of self-righteous proportions based on a neighbour's spite. I see a proud man disintegrate, feel his whiskey thirst, his rising shame, on seeing played back to him, crime watch style, a walk without crutches, as if it's a dirty secret, no message mention of the effort it took to attempt this, or the pain he felt for days afterwards, as his body image his, is poked with a laser point. He's called on to account for himself by the women who act as judge and jewellery. I'm there to bear witness, but forbidden to say anything. I want to howl for his right to be human. So, that's that. I'm trying to write some poems about work. This is, um, it's called The Bradford Factor. It's nothing to do with Bradford. It, the Bradford Factor is a sort of el um, algorithm for checking how much time people have off sick. Um, so it's set somewhere else which someone here might recognise. Um, the Bradford Factor. And it's for everyone who's on zero hours contracts too. The Bradford Factor. We were under the flyover when they threw everything at us. We had long arms, broad shoulders and hearts that skipped a beat. Saul says he got up every morning just to make a difference. He was the alchemist of change, we all were. Though sometimes it was Groundhog Day and things stayed just the same. We were watched from a great height and from within our laptops. Our banter was a one skin roll up. We often cried, but not always in private or in the toilets. We were creative and resilient in our CVs. But our bones ached with the weight of data. Our eyes were screen dumps filled with rows of asterisks and ampersands. We were always hungry and survived on cash and carry coffee, airport holiday gifts and cut price leaving do cake from the corner shop. We were troubled by a colleague who couldn't take it anymore and hung like a reproachful question mark from the rafters of the open plan office. We were our own worst taskmasters. Our lips were dry and our de desktops pigstyed. We were CYB, covering our backs with neutron bomb-proof rhinoceros hide, dreading that phone call, that meeting in a side room, that summons to the coroner's court. Our hearts became calcified. Our lips formed the empty circle of a default no. We spent our days condensing stories, and the stories rushed by too fast, with the hell-bent disastering of a decoupled train. We were once passionate, but that could not be reflected in the data. Stuff happened that did not happen because it was not recorded in the data. We were operating at the level of fictional nonsense, but we drew our, bound we drew our boundaries each night with lipfinity and quick dry top coat. It was payment by numbers and we knew our days were numbered. 
We were next to the flyover when we went under. We had thin skins, frazzled hearts, and the strength to walk away.